This briefcase is made from pure walnut. It has black hardware, a vintage leather handle. It's powered by a Raspberry Pi 4 with two gigs of RAM, and it has roughly 10 gajillion games on it. It has five Space Invader inlays on the front. Cats really love it, and today we're gonna build it. With this particular project, I am really determined to spend as little money as possible. We have this old Dell monitor that's just been sitting around in storage, and I think it's gonna be perfect. I think it's 1920 by 1080, which is more than enough for these old school games. This quick release plate, this metal connector, is actually kind of perfect for our needs, so we're gonna set it aside and actually use it for this build. This big old gorgeous chunk of walnut has been sitting in my shop for like, for over a year. I've just been waiting for the most ideal project to use it, and this is definitely the one. This table saw is a little sad and flimsy, so I like to square it up and true it up before cutting any wood, especially this really pretty piece of walnut. So the sides of the briefcase are going to be nice, chunky, and thick, uh, just for stability's sake, but the top and bottom are gonna be a little thinner. So right now I'm doing pepperoni slices, really thin slices of that walnut. I'm gonna use that as boards for the top and bottom. I've measured and counted and remeasured and recounted like five times now, and I'm still fairly confident that I'm gonna get this wrong. Oh, now it's time for Miu Miu's inspection. Anything that enters, she inspects. And by inspects, I mean sits in it, on it, and then stares at me. So one of the requirements that I gave myself was do not spend an excessive amount of money on this project. I have so many pieces of scrap walnut just lying around that uh, I'm gonna try to utilize it, glue it up, plane it down, whatever I need to do in order to make it usable for this project. Man, guys, check out this knot in the walnut. I kind of uncovered it when I was slicing it. It does give me an idea for the cover that I might try to go for. It could be pretty cool if we filled it with epoxy, dyed the epoxy, filled it, filled the hole, and then used it in some sort of graphic based on nothing really at all. I'm going with red. Don't know why, just feeling it. This particular epoxy that I'm using is called Max 1618. It's absolutely my favorite for uh, pull cues. It's, it's crystal clear, it does not yellow, and it's very watery, which is awesome when you want to fill all the nooks and crannies of something. 24 hours later and it's finally cured. Now it's time to take this razor blade and cut it away from that temporary container we made to, to hold the epoxy. For the cover, I decided to CNC Mega Man. It's a classic Nintendo game. I loved it, particularly Mega Man 2. But the challenge here is I am actually using a, a pole cue CNC instead of just a regular CNC, which means the amount of forward and backward travel, the amount of wide travel I have is around 1.4 inches. No exaggeration, it's literally 1.4 inches back and forth. So with bigger graphics like this that are gonna be like three or four inches tall, I've never actually tried to spread it and divide it over several boards. So this is all new and difficult and confusing and weird. But as I'm in the middle of writing out my G code for the CNC machine, the doorbell rings, it's the mailman and it's the Raspberry Pi. So I stop everything to assess. I've never actually used one of these before. I've read about them for years and I'm super stoked. I see four USB ports, an ethernet port, a USB type C port, which I think is just for charging. I initially planned to actually make a case for the Pi using wood, but last minute I decided against it mainly to save money. And just as I'm about to start CNCing, the coupling breaks because that's just my luck. It snapped right in half. This puts everything on pause for four days, but after that, the mail comes. Ooh, it's silver, neat. All right, new coupler installed. Everything looks good, tests good, we're back. And this is the moment of truth. We are doing an exceedingly difficult Mega Man drawing spread over four separate pieces of walnut. So yeah, I'm just gonna fast forward it through the rest of this failure because tried something, did not work, cried a little bit, moved on, got a new plan. It's fine, this happens. Space Invaders, more importantly, they can fit on a single strip of walnut and instead of doing inlays, we're going to just fill the pockets with dyed epoxy. So much easier and just as cool. To create a dam to prevent epoxy from spilling, I'm gonna use, dude, is this glitter? Is this glitter hot glue? When it comes to coloring epoxy, we have so many colors to choose from that sometimes it can be overwhelming. But yeah, this feels right. It's starting to get more fun now. Definitely less stressful that we've moved on from Mega Man. Guys, I, I ran out of gloves, so I grabbed some of my wife's. They fit perfect. This is a perfect fit. There's so many awesome epoxy mixing videos on YouTube where they take a big drill and then spin it up. I want to try that. Granted, I'm not using it. <laughs> I want to try a mini version with a Dremel. Oh, nice. Yep. Perfect. This is definitely the wrong bit to use. It's shedding black things everywhere. All right, now it's time to make the colors and fill with epoxy. I really do love this step. Working with epoxy is a lot of fun. And while that sets, it's time to feed our 400 gallon reef tank. They're definitely hungry.
So when doing glue-ups that are on the larger side, I tend to divide them into sections that can fit into my planer, which I think is a maximum of 12 inches. This DeWalt planer is really nice. It's like super precise. You just have to be careful and pay attention to the order in which you're, you're doing everything to make sure that every piece gets the same amount of cuts. This is the piece that I'm eyeballing. It's, uh, it's not finished yet. It needs more passes, but dude, it's getting close. There we go. It looks absolutely amazing. Time to cut everything down to size. We are gonna go a little bit oversized because I'm gonna take it to the routing table and, and router everything flush. The top is almost done and man, it looks so good. Now, I don't know why, I guess I never really thought about it, but I had always assumed that briefcases were made separately from the, you cut the top, you cut the bottom, and then you put some hinges on it and you're done. I guess it makes sense in, in hindsight that you would make it from one complete box and then you would cut that box in half. These big, huge Bessie bar clamps are so expensive. And because of that, I only have like four of them. So I find myself often making modern art sculptures with like 10 trillion tiny clamps. With the glue up complete, let's take it to the routing table and shave everything down to size. Uh, it's time for the chop. Ever since starting this project, I've been absolutely dreading kind of looking forward to this part. I have a super cheap and a very old DeWalt portable saw. Like this saw is meant to be put in the back of like a pickup truck. But I do make sure it's like square and true at all times. I calibrate it like 15 times a day, particularly with making pull cues where tiny little deviations matter. So I'm cautiously optimistic. I do notice that as the saw eats up more and more wood, this gap is forming. And I'm starting to worry that that might warp the angles. So I need to insert something to accommodate. This teeny tiny piece of scrap wood trash has literally been on my garage floor for like eight months and it turns out to be a 100 percent perfect fit i'm at the very end of my last cut and i can already tell that it came out 100 percent perfect i'm so stoked it's starting to finally feel like a briefcase now which is awesome before i get too much farther i'm gonna patch up a couple flaws that i'm seeing there's some flaws in the wood itself and then the glue up has some mess ups i start by making a slurry of walnut shavings and wood glue normally i use white glue but i honestly don't know where the bottle is but this should work so do you guys see that dark part where the glue is soaking into the wood it's so important to sand this down before you apply the finish Otherwise, you'll see in the final product the amount of crazy ridiculousness that I have to do in order to make non pull cue shaped pieces fit into my pull cue CNC machine is, is bonkers. I'm routering in a teeny tiny lip for the Dell monitor to sit in nice and snug. It's time to gauge the height needed to make the monitor nice and flush with the briefcase. I usually use playing cards for this application. They're a great method to gauge in the distance exactly. Now I take the cards needed and I use them to set my bandsaw fence. Before I get too much farther, it's time to put on all the hardware. I love this step. Oh my God, guys, this cat always in the box always. In order to lock the briefcase lid at 90 degrees, you know, so it doesn't fall directly backwards, I found these lid support hinges. I think they're meant actually for toy chests. Absolute nightmare. I end up spending days of frustration, cutting, sawing, filing, recutting, drilling to make these things work for this specific application, which is definitely not a toy chest. Next time, I'm gonna go to a thrift store, grab an old briefcase, chop it up, recycle the hardware. Never ever, ever again. I thought long and hard about the best way to implement this lid support. I really didn't want it taking up space in the briefcase itself. And it seemed like a good learning practice opportunity or whatever to router in like a little tiny compartment. Plus the precision on this routing table is just so nice and I don't get to use it often enough. So whenever I see an opportunity to use it, I jump on it. Dude, it looks so good. But honestly, I really thought that I'd need two lid supports. So I went ahead and cut holes on both sides but it turned out to not really be needed at all. Time to do a small round over. I have like a quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch round over bits. I kind of just gauge these things by eye. I'm not sure which bit this is. I think it's a half inch. And this is my favorite part of every single project. By the time I'm sanding, the anxiety of the unknown is over. The hard things have been solved. It's done, I can sleep easy. I block sand with 100 grit first and wipe it down with acetone and then finish it off with 220 grit. I've had this old leather belt for, I don't know, 10 years, maybe more. I thought about tossing it many times and I'm so glad that I never did. So I cut it down to size. I quickly burnish the edges and it makes this like really pretty awesome, comfortable to hold handle. I found these clasps on Amazon. They're super cheap, like, ridiculously, suspiciously cheap. 
but they look really good. Hopefully they don't fall apart on me. I'm so excited to get these on. They're the last piece needed. I've never made a briefcase before or really anything even remotely close to one. I'm so proud of myself. I'm so stoked about how great it turned out. The weight, the feel, the smell, they're super hard to convey through video, but it's just a really joyful object. I was kind of blown away and shocked by how expensive hard foam is. Like all that name brand stuff that people use in gun cases and whatnot, it's insanely expensive. So what I found, and this is a nice pro tip for you guys, search for polyethylene foam. It's all the same stuff, but you can find no name versions that are literally a fraction of the price. But before I can really start adding anything to the inside, it's time to apply the finish. I'm using wipe on poly because I've had some lying around the shop and honestly, it's an awesome finish. I typically do three really light coats with a light sanding in between the second and third coat. I typically don't sand after the first one because these layers are so thin that you'll often just burn right through it. While the finish dries, I'm gonna use this packaging, the stuff that the controllers came in, to use a template for the foam. I also added some routes for the wires just so everything can be charged without needing to really remove it from the foam. It takes like five seconds with the scroll saw before I realize that this is probably overkill for this application. It's like cutting air with zero resistance, which makes accidentally deviating from my lines wicked easy. But I'm happy with the way it turned out regardless. There are a couple of goofs, but it's okay. So my old fish tank light was this canopy that was custom made from acrylic. We don't use it anymore, so we have lots of excess acrylic just lying around, and this is the perfect chance to use some of it. Step one is to cut a hole for some wire management. Cutting acrylic can be really annoying because when it gets hot, it melts and fuses back into itself. It makes a giant mess, but you just have to add like a tiny trickle of water, and it's more than enough to keep everything nice and cool. I also added a second sacrificial piece of acrylic underneath, and that prevents the hole saw from chipping when it exits out the other side. It's always important and obviously to do a dry fit before you start gluing everything up. And here you can see the gap that I'm leaving underneath these clear acrylic dividers, and that's for wires to route through if need be. I like to keep a small stash of random colored acrylic sheets around, mainly to use for pull cue inlays. I'm pretty sure that this one is red, but I don't want to remove the protective cover until very, very end so I don't scratch the thing. I think that this sheet will make an awesome base for the Raspberry Pi, and it'll allow me to add some screw posts to the bottom so it's elevated off the bottom of the briefcase. Nice, all done, cutting the size, holes are drilled, and it's pink. Dude, there's nothing wrong with pink. Pink is great, but I wanted red, not pink. The only other sheets big enough to make work are white and black, that's it. I chose white because I want the screw posts to be visible. I think they'll look really good as a design element, not to be hidden. And I've added nuts to the posts in order to get the right height that I'm looking for. For the insides, I'm using all sorts of different adhesives. For the pie, I'm using hot glue because it's super easy to detach in case I need to troubleshoot something or remove it for whatever reason. For the screw posts, I'm using two-part epoxy. The acrylic dividers are glued in with sienna acrylate, aka super glue, and the monitor wood supports were glued in with two-part epoxy. I absolutely love utilizing the monitor's quick-release plate. It allows the plate to be permanently bonded to the briefcase while the monitor can still be removed for whatever reason. But I am a little worried that once it's attached, it's going to be super difficult to reach the button. It's There's not a lot of room for fingers, so I'm adding this little strip of purple heart that'll lay over the button and be accessible from the bottom of the monitor. I have Bubs on standby next to me while I start adding wires. His hands are much smaller than mine and some of these spaces are absolutely tiny. Basically my plan with the wires is to jam literally everything into this little white compartment, tape it down and forget about it. With the wires complete, I can finally, finally, finally glue the monitor in and lastly, under Mew Mew's constant observation, put in the controllers. Guys, I'm just so proud of this project. As an object, it's beautiful. And it's such an elegant solution to the problem of being able to play video games and watch TV at the same time. Like that was the entire genesis of this project. How can we keep watching Mr. Beast and play video games? In terms of gaming, we are a family of PC gamers. PC gamers through and through. But these old nostalgic games, they really do need to be played on a couch with old school controllers. There's really no other way. Let's see, I was four years old when the Nintendo Entertainment system was released, six years old when the Sega Genesis came out, nine years old when the Super Nintendo came out, I think it was 14 when the N64 came out. So these games very much defined my childhood and they were the bond between so many of my friends growing up. That was it, video games, that was our life. Also, and I think many people will agree with me here, these games were hard. Compared to gaming now, these games were on another level of difficulty. Kids these days have literally no idea idea, the rage 
warranted by ghosts and goblins or blaster master or ninja gaiden trying to beat a level and dying four thousand times over and over and over again all night i really do believe that it made my generation better either that or horribly worse with mental problems i'm unsure but i do hope that you enjoyed this episode and thanks for watching